Our next speaker has been well known and respected as a restaurateur in Calgary for many years. She joined uh, the faculty at SAIT in 2011 and now teaches culinary entrepreneurship, aspiring young leaders. Please put your hands together for Patricia Koich. Let's do this. Good evening, everyone. So this is me. At six years old, I was ready to take on the world. I was pretty sure in my head I thought I would be famous. I was afraid of nothing. I loved people. I loved making them laugh. And I loved being the center of attention. I guess you could say I really love the spotlight. One day in grade seven, drama class, I had a project. It was a monologue. It was a major assignment, so I practiced and I practiced like crazy. It started out so well, and by the third line, I froze. I didn't know what to do. I tried to gain control, but I started crying and I had to leave the room. I was mortified. <laughs> the experience introduced this jury. It sounded a lot like these guys. The voices told me to sh how could I have ever done that? Put myself out there? Be judged? How could you let all of those people see that you're just not good enough. What? What? I'm not good enough? But my mom and dad said I could do anything that I wanted, as long as I put my mind to it. Whatever time an opportunity would come my way, the voices of doubt would remind me of that day, that embarrassing and vulnerable moment that I felt in drama class. There must be a different way. What could I do to protect myself? You see, the jury wasn't loud enough to stop me entirely. But they were still present. I thought, I'd join a team. Yes, that would work, because a team, I wouldn't be alone, and I wouldn't be vulnerable. So this is me playing Ringette. And at 13 years old, I still stood out, as you can see. <laughs> but I was always surrounded by my teammates. Being a part of a team was working, and the heckling, jur excuse me, heckling jury, jury started to subside. My interest from sports went to the hospitality industry, and I joined the dining room teams. I also followed my brother's footsteps and joined hospitality program at SAIT. Linda Evans' hair, shoulder pads, and all. <laughs> Two years after graduation, I opened a restaurant together with my business partner and investors. And a new trial began. Customers, restaurant critics, tourists. When would they come? What would they say? And will they ever return? Would I fail? What happens if I do? Then there was the staff. Does she really know what she's doing? I never had to do any of this at my other job. I've done, <coughs> excuse me, wait, what? She's taking a day off? What? She must not care if she's going to teach at SAIT. Their evidence would build and they'd ask, what about us? And I'd have no time for a rebuttal. The chef, so talented, so passionate, creating thousands of incredible culinary moments, one dish and one flavor at a time. But what does she even know about cooking? She's not a chef. He would plead his case as I would ask him about numbers and budgets. Can't you see how passionate I am? How good this dish is? This slide is one of our victories at the restaurant, a culinary experience we created for gastronomies from around the world. It was a society I always wanted to be a part of. And that night, I put my team and myself out there. That night, we won our trial. In 2012, I joined the team of instructors at SAIT. Some people would ask, so you're just teaching now? A simple and well-intended question that I could only heard as an accusation from the jury. Yes, I'm enjoying only having one full-time job. I'd state defensively, channeling my inner O-captain, my captain. In my classroom, I would prepare my lesson plans, naively thinking, I got this. Don't they know I used to own a restaurant? I'll just treat it like I'm training my staff. I would walk into the room thinking today is going to change their lives. And having only one, excuse me, is going to change their lives. Hello? Hello? Anyone? <laughs> the voices I heard were only in the jury. I recently participated in a course this past year, and I, asked some, I was asked some very tough questions. Upon reflection in an exercise, I came to a realization. What? Who's in that jury? Who's running the jury? A 13-year-old drama student who was scared and vulnerable? This girl was running the commentary of my life? 
I cannot tell you how freeing it was to be present to that imaginary jury, jury and realize I could free myself. I could choose to be vulnerable. I could tell her that what happened was very scary and everything is okay. People will judge you, so what if they do? If you don't believe in yourself, someone is definitely going to. <laughs> yep, you guessed it. I started to hear a different voice. The new voice was strong and bold and she said things like, what have you got to lose? Wouldn't you rather have the experience? I started to ask questions, different ones, like, what can't I do? Does it really matter if anyone judges you at all? You may have heard it before, but I'm happy to say it again. Life is not a dress rehearsal. This is your one shot. It's not a life sentence. Your time is undetermined, and the roles you play can be infinite. You just have to choose to show up to the audition and see what happens. It's crazy to be here tonight, though you definitely don't look like this photo. I can promise you I relived that moment, mo excuse me, moment in drama class over and over and over again. I was putting myself on trial, and tonight you're the jury. Then I realized there's always going to be some sort of trial and some reminder that vulnerability is scary. Life has many roads, twists and turns, some well-traveled and some less traveled, Robert Frost did say. Perhaps the most traveled is the one paved with feeling like you're just not enough. Why do we choose that one? What's down the one less traveled? Where does it lead? Like choosing the path you travel, you, as am I, we can be the authors of our own stories, the stenographers of our own trials, and when we are present to that, we can turn the page and start a new chapter. There can become, and you can become any character we choose and take that leap of faith and believe in ourselves. I was reminded this year that we are not perfect, just human, and the voices may, excuse me, voices of self-doubt may rise up, but just fake it until you make it. After all, if you're pretending to be something, aren't you actually being it? So why not pretend to be fabulous or ambitious or courageous? You might not, you might forget you're pretending at all. Yeah.